in, in Arabic, sometimes you use a word to refer to the causes or the consequences, uh, consequences of this word. What does that mean? When the Prophet ﷺ tells you, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu taqullaha haqqa tuqate wa la tamutanna illa wa antum muslimun. Or you believe, fear Allah, the fear that is due for him or that's appropriate for him, and do not die but as Muslims. Can you control your death? Do not die but as, but as Muslims. You cannot control your death. Can you guarantee that you will die as Muslim? You cannot guarantee that you will die as Muslim, but Allah has forbidden you from dying except as Muslim. As a Muslim. And, and, the, and this means what? It means that you, do, you, should, you should abide by the things that will lead you to die as a Muslim. You should abide by the things that will lead you to die as a Muslim. Because, ma fa Allah bi al-dhabikum min shakartum wa amantum. What will Allah do tormenting you? Or what benefit will Allah have in tormenting you if you showed gratitude and you were faithful? So Allah does not have any benefit in tormenting you. Therefore, Allah will not uh, misguide you at the end of your life if you uh, led a righteous, wholesome life. So if you live as a Muslim, you will die as a Muslim. And if you're, if you're consistently living by, by Allah's guidance, you will die on Allah's guidance. And that's what it means. So it's, you know, living as a Muslim will cause you to die as a Muslim. So when Allah forbids you to die, but as a Muslim, He's, he's commanding you to live as a Muslim so that when you die, you will die as a Muslim or a submitter to His divine will. Now, that is using the, the word to refer to the cause. And when, when, when does... Uh, Allah or the Prophet sort of used the word to refer to the consequences. Uh, many times they, uh, they do. In the revelation, you find many times the use of words and uh, the reference would be to the consequences, such as what? When the Prophet says, La tarda, do not get angry. Uh, who, whoever can control the, the anger itself? The anger itself is out of your control. So part of it is, is, is to refer to the causes, and part of it is to refer to the consequences, but mainly to refer to the consequences of anger. So the prohibition here is from the consequences of anger. So the prohibition here is that you should not transgress if you get angry. If you get angry, when you get angry, this is what you should do. You should, you know, if you... If you're standing, sit, and if you're sitting, lie down, uh, and, and uh, if you lie down, and that still does not take away your anger, you go make wudu to, uh, to calm you down and to bring down your anger and to bring your anger under control. So here, it, he's forbidding anger, but he means to forbid the consequences of anger, and to, to a certain extent the causes of anger, because if you teach yourself forbearance, you will become forbearing. And, you know, the Prophet said, Most certainly, becoming knowledgeable is by seeking knowledge, and becoming forbearing is by practicing forbearance. <coughs> so, you visit, you visit the sick, and as we said, the, the, there is a huge reward. Uh, Allah, you find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala waiting for you if you visit the sick. The reward is, is enormous. You will be in the gar fruitful gardens of paradise, meaning you, the, you will be doing the things that will lead you. You will be on the path that will lead, lead you to the fruitful gardens of uh, paradise until you go back. So you visit the sick, and you visit the sick certainly uh, for the benefit of the sick. And that means that if the sick wants you to stay more, you stay more. If the sick wants you, to come back every day, you come back every day as much as you can, as much as you can. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah does not burden any soul beyond its capacity. And if the sick does not want you to come back that frequently, you do not go back that frequently. So it's all for the sick. If the sick looks like the, he wants you to stay some more, you stay some more. If he looks like he wants you to leave, you leave. 
so you have to be considerate, you have to be sensitive, and you have to be smart and intelligent in reading the cues on his face and on his behavior and the behavior of the household. Uh, so you visit the sick, and uh, then if someone is dying, well, or in the, you know, the, the process of, of dying, uh, what you need to do is that you need to remind them of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that they can say la ilaha illallah. The Prophet sallallahu said, man kana afira kalamihi la ilaha illallah dakhala jannah. Whoever, who, whosoever says la ilaha illallah or whose last, who, whose last words are la ilaha illallah will enter paradise. Or whoever says la ilaha illallah is his last words uh, will enter paradise. So you want him to say la ilaha illallah and for la ilaha illallah to be his uh, last word. Um, and whosoever does this will enter paradise. Now, let's say you, uh, let's say, uh, there is a difference by the way between someone who's, you're not going to go to someone who has like, uh, you know, appendicitis and, <laughs> and tell them, you know, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, to remind them of la ilaha illallah. Because if someone is not about to die, you actually should give them hope that they'll live. Because uh, the Prophet Wasallam used to do this. There is, a, there is a hadith that is not very authentic. Hafsiqud al-maridi fil ajal. Give the, the patient hope of li the hope of life. But the, the hadith is not very authentic, it's in Sunan ibn Majah. But the Prophet ﷺ used to do this, and then when he visited Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas, when Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas fell ill, and he visited Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas, and he wanted you know, to ask the Prophet ﷺ if he should donate all of his money, and the Prophet ﷺ said to him, no, he said, half of my money. The Prophet said, no, write it as a will for charitable causes. And Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas said, yes, one third, and the Prophet ﷺ said, yes, and one third is a lot. Uh, what, what, what the Prophet did on this day, he, he said to him, لَعَلَّكَ أَن تُعَمَّرَ فَيَنْتَفِعَ بِكَ أَقْوَامُ وَيَسْتَضِرَّ بِكَ آخَرُونَ You will live, you will inshallah live, and uh, many people will benefit from you, and many people will be harmed by you. The many people will be harmed by you are the, you know, treacherous, treacherous wicked, etc. And the many people that will benefit from him would be the, the believers. So it is important that when someone is sick, but the sick is not, sickness is not terminal, that you give them hope and you tell them how life will be better, it'll get better, etc. And, and then that's what you should do. But if someone is in the process of dying and it's obvious, then you will uh, remind them of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you will give them hints that you, they should say la ilaha illallah. When they say la ilaha illallah, don't go back and, and give them more hints to say la ilaha illallah again. Because as long as they did not speak afterwards, that, that you should stay silent. When they speak and they say anything else, uh, you should try to remind them to say la ilaha illallah one more time. How do you remind them to say la ilaha illallah? It depends. I mean, if someone is a very practicing person and he's, you know, he knows and stuff, you just tell him, say la ilaha illallah, and he will appreciate it. But if someone is, you know, you're not quite sure about them and you're not quite sure that they'll take it easily and they may resent what, you, what you're saying because they, they may feel that you're, you know, you're telling them uh, you're, you're, you're about to die, etc., then you just say la ilaha illallah in front of them to remind them to say it. Don't tell them, say la ilaha illallah, but say la ilaha illallah. You, you say la ilaha illallah in front of them to remind them about it. And if they said la ilaha illallah and did not speak, as I said, you don't repeat it. And if they speak, you repeat it again so that they say it again.